good morning students in today's session that's our revision session number 4 we are going to learn about chapter number 10 in third session we have also discussed about chapter number 10 light reflection and refraction in third session we have discussed about reflection in this session we are going to discuss about refraction so here we are going to discuss about what is called refraction what is the definition of refraction also we will discuss that how refraction by glass slab how refraction is done by refraction is done by glass slab from this we will also discuss laws of refraction from laws of refraction we will also discuss about snell's law but this all we are going to discuss in form of revision after that we will discuss about different type of lenses in that we will have convex lens and concave lens means diverging and converging both type of lens after that we will discuss about lens formula also we are going to discuss magnification sign convention is also similar to mirror and power of lenses right what is called power of lenses right that we are going to discuss so let's start first from the definition of refraction what is called refraction as we have studied that in refraction what will happen right when light enters from one transparent medium to another transparent medium we can say like this that suppose this is a surface which separates two transparent medium this is our first transparent medium eta1 it may be of air and suppose this is our eta2 another transparent medium so these are two transparent medium when a light ray enters from one transparent medium to another transparent medium this is a normal drawn to the surface this is our incident ray when light enters from one transparent medium to another transparent medium it changes its direction so see this is its original direction without any change right so now when it changes its direction so there are two possibilities it can move towards the normal or it can move away from the normal right first is like this this is our normal so the refracted ray it will move towards the normal right this is the first possibility and the another possibility is it can go away from the normal so this red is also possible here which goes away from the normal now both of the possibilities is there this and this in both case it changes its direction so when it will move towards the normal and when it will go away from the normal for that we have understood that when it moves from rarer medium to denser medium it moves towards the normal and when light ray it goes from denser medium to rarer medium it will move away from the normal right this we have understood this angle between incident ray and normal that is our angle of incident this angle between normal and refracted ray or this also between this normal and this refracted ray that is called angle of refraction right so this way we have understood about what is definition of refraction okay as we understood it uh the natural phenomena which happens around us in that uh, regular video we have taken the example we have taken a glass it was half filled with water and the pencil was kept and when you will see the pencil you will see that it is broken it is due to refraction it was explained in the video you can go through all the video and you can understand it right now why this refraction take place so generally we know that when it will take place because in both of the medium speed of light it will be different and due to that speed of light it is going to change its direction right so refraction is done because light enters into 
one medium to another medium and in that medium it is its speed is not constant and due to that it is its direction is going to get changed right so this was our definition of refraction the another topic is refraction due to glass slab for that first we will require a glass slab so here we can assume a glass slab we can give it name like this a b c or d whatever name you can give there is no problem at all see this medium eta 1 it is of air this another medium eta 2 it is of glass and the third medium eta 3 which is similar to eta 1 so that is also of air now see when light ray suppose this is my light ray i give it name pq pq is the light ray which incident on surface AB by making angle theta 1 right see this is air and this is glass so rarer to denser it will move towards the normal as we know that what will happen it will move towards the normal so here I am explaining it with the help of blue color line that it will move towards the normal now how you can guess that it has moved towards the normal before that let's draw a normal here and suppose if we think this PQ ray, it is not refracted, if it don't change its direction, so how it will pass, so we can say like this, that if it is not refracted, so it may pass like this. Now, for the surface, it is clear that this is theta 1 and this will be your theta 2. Okay, now. If we think QR, this ray QR, it is our reflected ray for surface AB, but this QR, it is incident ray for this, sorry, for this C or DC. So, as this QR, it is our incident ray for our surface DC. Now, this is our denser medium and this is our rarer medium. So, as we all know that when light enters from denser medium to rarer medium again this glass is denser and this air is rarer so when it moves from denser medium to rarer medium it will always try to move away from the normal and see here I am trying to explain it that it is moving away from the normal with the help of red color now see here, this angle of incidence for surface DC, this will be our theta 3. This will be our theta 4, which is angle of refraction for surface AB. Now when you will observe it, that this ray and this ray, both are parallel to each other. And this parallel distance, the shortest distance between them, this distance is called lateral because your light ray is shift literally due to refraction okay so this is refraction due to glass slab that we have understood here but this is in form of revision so i have just taken the theme of it in detail you can go throughout the video and check after that we can also understand laws of refraction so there are two laws of refraction the first law is what is the first law angle of incident sign two angle of refraction of sign is always constant. This is our first law of refraction. And the second law is, is angle of incident normal drawn to the surface and angle of emergent. Right? Sorry. Ray of incident normal drawn to the surface and ray of refraction, they all lies in a same plane. So as we have understood in the incident ray, the Refracted ray and the normal, they all are in same plane. Right? You can uh, you can visualize it that if you place a glass slab on a paper and you try to do this experimentally, then you will know that the incident ray, the normal, and the refracted ray that will lie in a same plane. Right? 
So that was our second law. So we can write it like this: that incident ray normal and refracted ray lies in a same plane. So that is our refraction by glass slab that we have completed. That is our law of refraction. Now from this law of refraction, how we have to understood Snell's law? It's very easy. From the first law of refraction, we can understand Snell's law. Here I am trying to explain the Snell's law. See, this from the first law, what we can say that sine theta i by sine theta r is equal to constant, and that constant is eta two upon eta one. That is constant. Sorry. How it is constant that we have explained in the video. You can go throughout the video and you can understand it. Now, just by doing a cross multiplication, we will get eta one sine theta i equal to eta two sine theta r. So this is a simple form of Snell's law. Now, how we can visualize it? See, eta one means the first medium. Eta two means the another medium. Sine of this angle. And multiplication of this eta will be always equal to sine of this angle theta two and multiplication of eta two. Right? So this will be simple Snell's law. You can go throughout the video and you can check it in detail. Right? So as we have completed the refraction by glass slab uh, laws of refraction and Snell's law. After that, we have to take the another concept. That is refractive index. Now, what is called refractive index? To understand refractive index, we can go throughout its formula, or we can directly go throughout its definition. Okay. Before that, understand that refractive index it can be absolute refractive index or it can be relative refractive index. Right? For absolute refractive index, what we have to do that first of all, refractive index means eta, and that eta is equal to c by v, where c stands for what? C is speed of light in vacuum, and what is v? V is speed of light in any of Transparent medium, right? So this is the concept of eta. Eta is equal to c by v. There will be no unit because this is also speed and this is also speed. So there will be no any unit of refractive index eta. Okay? We have also understood that uh, here we understood like this that eta two by eta one. Right? So what do we mean by eta two by eta one? If we want to simplify it, how we can simplify? So see, eta two means what? That is c upon v two upon Here we will have c upon v1. So as by simplifying it, we will know that it is v1 by v2. So we can also say that eta2 by eta1 is equal to v1 by v2. Right. So this way we can go through it more detail. If uh, if you want to understand this in more detail in the videos which is provided to you, it is explain it in detail. Right. So you can go throughout the video and you can understand refractive. Index. What is refractive index? What is absolute refractive index? Absolute refractive index means it is taken with respect to speed of light in vacuum, and relative refractive index, which is taken. Uh, suppose if we talk about glass and water, right? So speed of light in medium of glass, speed of light in medium of water, and according to that, we can have a relative refractive indexes between them, right? So that we have discussed. You can go throughout the video and you can check it. After understanding this refractive Index. Now, refraction is generally done by lenses. We know that reflection, refraction, is done by lens. So, how many types of lenses are there? Definition of lens and that all is explained to you. You can go throughout the video and check, and you can also prepare your notes. There will be two type of lenses. This type of lens, which is broad from between and narrow at the end. This is our convex lens. Okay. The another type of lens, which is narrow from between and broad at its edge, 
so this type of lens is our concave lens right so how this lens is formed that is also explained in our videos you can go through all the videos and you can understand that how convex lens is formed how concave lens is formed this convex lens is also called converging lens because it converges light ray at one point this is called diverging lens because it diverges the difference of converging and diverging that is also explained uh, in the previous video it's explained in the regular video session so you can go through it and you can understand about different type of lenses what is properties of that lenses now we have to also understand here the topic which we forgot that is image formation image formation by lens as in mirror what we do for that we have different four fundamental ray diagrams here also we are going to get different fundamental ray diagrams according to that fundamental ray diagrams we are going to form different type of images now which are which is that ray diagrams let's understand it in detail right so let's understand it in detail which are that ray diagrams so the first ray diagram what it is i am taking only the example of concave lens by that we are going to explain it right you can go through all the videos and you can learn how it is formed suppose see different terms which is related to lens that also you know very well as uh, like mirror we have discussed about what is center of curvature right what is radius of curvature what is principal focus right what is pole what is principal axis what is called focal length so similar you can also assume like here lens it has two curved surface so simple this is our optical center f1 2f1 same way here f2 2f2 right so here we can assume that it is made up of one holosphere and here also we can assume that it is made up of another holosphere so according to that we will have this type of two center of curvatures this will be our center of curvatures okay both of the side now our first fundamental ray diagram is which is parallel to principal axis the ray which is parallel to principal axis it will refract back in such a way that it pass from focal length at uh, fo sorry focal point at other side so this is our first ray diagram our second ray diagram in that simple way this will be our optical center o uh principal axis passing from o similarly here we will have f1 here we will have 2f1 here we will have f2 here we will have 2f2 the second ray diagram is the light ray which passes from air it will refract back in such a way sorry it will refract at another side in such a way that it will be parallel to principal axis so parallel to principal axis passing from f2 passing from f1 it will be parallel to principal axis and the third ray diagram which is important Suppose here we are having a principal axis. This is our optical center O. F1, 2F1, F2, 2F2. The light ray which passes from optical center O, it will return. Sorry. It which passes from optical center O. This is our refraction. So it will just pass out through O, right? It will not reflect in any way, right? So these are our three fundamental ray diagrams, and by using these three ray diagrams, we can do different type of image formations, right? You can go through all the videos of image formation, and then you will understand it. You can form the image in detail. Here we will take only one or two examples of it. and we'll try to explain how image is formed okay. so let's see so after understanding this three ray diagrams we are going to take uh, one or two examples of image formations 
right? And we will try to explain it more. You can go throughout the video and you can understand. Our first case is that suppose this is our lens. Again, I am taking only example of font vaccines. You can go throughout the video in that you will have both of the image formation of concave and convex. This is our optical center O. F1 twice F1. We are going to have F2 and here we will have twice F2. Now suppose if I think that the object where our object is where is the object? We can say object is beyond 2 F1. So if the object is beyond 2 F1 our object is in first light ray which is passing Sorry, which is parallel to principal axis, it will pass in such a way that at another side it will reflect back, oh, sorry, it will reflect from F2 according to our first ray diagram, right? So it will reflect in this way. Second or third ray, you can use any of, you can use second ray diagram also and you can use third ray diagram also. So according to that, what we can say? See, if I take the Second ray diagram. So the light ray here will the light ray which passes from F it will refract here in such a way that you can see that it is emerging here. Again, if we try to explain it in detail, right? So we know very well that the light ray which pass from F, it will be parallel to our principal axis. I am drawing it without scale, so it will be, you can do it with scale, it will give you more accurate. So see, it is intersecting here. So here we will get an image that will be A dash, B dash. So what we can say, see, when our object is beyond 2 F1, where our image will form? It will form between F2 and 2F2. What will be nature of it? What will be nature of it? So see, we can see that here our image, how it is? Big or small? Yes, simple. We have learned that infinitely we will get at F little bit closer, it will move far to F, it will be on to F, right? So that we have all discussed in detail. But here, what will be nature of our image? Our image will be real. As it is real, it will be inverted. And what will be size of it? What will be size of it? So simple, it will be diminished in size. Right. So this we have taken as our example. Now let us take another example. Suppose. Actually we have to do all this thing with a proper measurement. Optical center O. F1 to F1. But here we can only get the estimates. F2 twice of F2. Now if I think that object is placed between to F1 and F1. So where is our object or we can write here. Right? Our second case. This was for first case. For second case. Object. Where our object is kept here? It is between F1 and twice F1. So first ray which is parallel. From where it is going to pass? It is going to pass from F2 according to the same rule. It must be straight line. The second, if it passes from F, it must be parallel. Or if it passes from O, it will pass out without any type of reflection. I am taking the second line that if it is parallel, Sorry, if it passes from F2, F1, so it would be parallel to principal axis. So see, 
it is forming an image here a dash b dash so where our image is formed our image is formed beyond here you can say that it is beyond 12 what is nature of the image again it is real and inverted but here the size you can see that the size will be here uh, as you will draw it with a proper measurement then you will used to know here we have just taken the estimated form right here we can get only the estimation of it so it will be enlarged I can draw it uh, I can draw it before uh, explaining but it will not give you the sense right so I am drawing without scale but you can draw it with the help of scale right otherwise I can just put out the image and I can just explain from it but I don't want to do that because you must be clear that where image is formed because in exams when the questions are asked so you have to form the image so in that case you, just, you can't just grab the image and you can write okay so by using the three fundamental ray diagram this way we can form different images right you can go throughout the videos and you can have a revision of image formation by concave lenses and convex lenses right so i have taken here different two examples of it and how it is formed this is our revision session so i have given only the concepts to you now the another topic after image formation right we have formed the images that's true but after that how we, where the image will form can we find out theoretically yes so to find out theoretically we are having different formulas as we have discussed it in mirror in revision 3 we are having a mirror formula so same here also we will have lens formula now what is called lens formula simple the formula or the equation which gives us relation between u v f now what is u v and f u means object distance v means image distance and f means focal length the equation which gives us relation between u v and f of lens that is called lens formula and what is the lens formula we don't have to prove it right now we have to just accept it that's 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f right so this will be our lens formula so we have also completed the lens formula now the another point is magnification okay let's try to understand magnification again magnification it is the same concept its ratio of height of image to height of object again m is equal to h dash upon h also n is equal to v upon u now understand magnification in mirror our formula was m is equal to minus v upon u and for lens we will have only v upon u why this happened that is a proof of it but we are not going to discuss it in detail but just a conceptual idea i can give you in mirror your u is also negative and your v is also negative and the image which was formed that was erect so that negative negative at one side so they will nullify that effect but the image is erect so that negative due to that in mirror we are having minus v by u for lens we can say that the image is formed at right side right it is at another side of it so u is negative v is positive and the image is erect so the negative one of u and the negative of that event so that negative negative will be nullified and already our image is at right side so here we will not have any one more negative if you can't understand this don't worry about it but it was just a logical answer right so you can go through it 
in magnification of mirror we will have minus v by u and in magnification of lens we will have v by u now one more question that is there any sign convention for lenses yes there is a similar sign convention for lenses that for negative x direction we will have negative for positive x direction we will have positive if the object or image is above the principal axis that will be positive if it is below the principal axis that will be negative and all of the distance is taken with reference to optical center o right so this way positive this way negative if it is above positive if it is below negative right so this also we have understood now again don't get confused beta in this magnification of lens and mirror in mirror if we are having minus v by u there is a proof of it but in this revision session we are not going to discuss it in detail and for lens we will have v by u that is no negative sign in magnifications formula if we are finding it for lens all of the other things other explanation is same that m is greater than 1 or m sorry first m is equal to 1 m is greater than 1 and m is less than 1 the positive one and the negative one the concept which we have taken that m is equal to 1 means same in size m is greater than 1 means bigger in size m is less than 1 means smaller in size positive means virtual and erect and negative means real and inverted right so all that things which we have understood for lens and mirror that will be same but only there will be difference in the formula for mirror we are having minus v by u and for lens we are having v by u. Now, the last concept of the chapter and of our revision section also, that is power of lens. Now, what is power of lens? First of all, when this word comes in front of us, power, okay, power of lens, what lens can do? We have two types of lens, concave lens and convex lens, right? If we talk about concave and con Next. Now, concave lens is also called diverging lens and convex lens is called converging lens. So, these lenses can either diverge like rays or they can converge like rays. So, what is the power? The power of the lens means the ability of lens. Now, this lens can diverge and this lens can converge. So, we can say that the ability to diverge or to converge light ray that is called power of lens. The ability to diverge or to converge light ray by the lens that is called power of lens and it is observed that if you are having more focal length the ability is decreased. That means both will be reciprocal. So we can say like this power of lens P is equal to 1 upon F because more focal length, less ability, less focal length is there. So there will be more ability to diverge and converge. So from that we will have this formula. From this we can also have its unit. It can be 1 upon meter or 1 upon centimeter because F that is focal length, it will be unit of length. Okay. In Another word we can also call this unit as diopter and if uh, it's asked that one diopter means what? One diopter means when your f is equal to one meter. In this case, when your focal length of lens is one meter, so the ability to diverge or to converge the light ray of that lens is called one diopter right so it can be also asked now this power of lens it can be positive also and it can be negative also according to that we can find that which type of lens uh, it is right what do we mean by positive positive lens means it will be concave or convex again it will be concave or convex now i am not going to tell you it is concave or convex again if the power of lens is positive, it is concave or convex that you are going to find from your notes and from the sessions which we have discussed earlier, right? So this way we will have power of lens. Yeah, you are right, you are guessing right, everything is right. If the power of lens is positive, it means what it is, concave or convex? Just let me know. Simple. Right? Converging or diverging? Simple beta. 
if the power of lens is positive they can ask you whether it is concave lens or convex lens or in another word they can ask you find out that it is converging lens or it is diverging lens so instead of concave and convex they can also give you converging lens and diverging lens keep this in your mind that one diopter what do we mean by one diopter one diopter means the lens if it's having a focal length of 1 meter so in such cases we can say that its power or its ability is what diopter this you are going to find this is very most important for your test session so this way we have completed our revision session 4 that is based on refraction right again this was just our revision session so we have just taken taken an overview of it we have not discussed it in detail everything is given to you in form of question banks right every concept is explained to you in detail in the earlier videos so you can go throughout the videos and you can go throughout the notes and this session this revision session can just help you to have a overview of the chapter second part that was refraction thank you